Hello and welcome to Tonalist Painting with M. Francis McCarthy. This is your painter in residence, M. Francis McCarthy. And the painting we're doing today is Twilight Reverie. It's an 8x10. And uh, I did, the, did this painting very recently, about I think two or three weeks ago. And I'm really happy with it. Um, uh, this is my second attempt at the audio because I, I started getting brain farts. And um, uh, well, we, we know I ramble, but you know. Uh, sometimes it was getting out of control anyway um, this is done on the burn number like the painting we did last week and that's a big change for me and I've discussed that quite a lot with you guys um, I uh, do know some other artists that work on burn number and I can see why it's pretty cool I like it um, it's forcing me to be not so much like at the stage we're seeing now it's my drawing stage and what I'm doing right now is I'm just drawing in black over the ember and the reason I settled I don't know why it just popped in my head that uh, instead of chromatic black I'm gonna go with ivory black and um, well I sort of know why it, it I feel like the ivory black is a more traditional color and that the old masters used a lot of it ivory black is called ivory black because it's come from burnt burnt bones and I find something about that really appealing um, knowing that it's a straight-up earth pigment and uh, you know our ancestors were probably using this color you know how, how, who knows how long ago uh, you know hundreds of thousands of years or just thousands of years ago but uh, I like it for that reason it's <clears throat> I guess if you think about it it's uh, it's like charcoal made out of bones and then they add some oil to it but uh, I, as I discussed yesterday I run into some problems doing some drawings that I was gonna let dry on um, several large paintings I was planning on doing uh, last week and I attribute that mostly to either some problem with the medium the alkaloid medium I was using or the fact that I'm doing these drawings on top of it's a painting that's been coated with a layer of oil paint so for that reason would be less absorbent than the usual um, gesso ground that I prepare and, um, and that's not such a bad thing I, it's it's nice for painting on top of um, I had noticed uh, even in paintings like Twilight Reverie here uh, normally I like to go over everything with a liquid and, uh, and uh, oil it out um, because uh, some areas of the painting go very matte uh, and dull uh, as they dry so um, and I've always just I've always done that I've always gone over the paintings with a coat of liquid and, and it, to me it just builds up a nice super tough paint film as well so anyway um, I have noticed on some of these that I would have to wait a few extra days before going in with the liquid over the top of the painting well I like to go not just go over the top I scrape things down and then go in with the liquid and usually that's dry to the touch the next day I can work on it then if I want to um, anyway, uh, so because of these uh, issues I had with the uh, drawing on my underpaintings uh, this week, um, I went ahead and I'm engaged in doing uh, studies after the masters, and uh, I've done I did nine last week, so uh, nine new ones. Um, you won't be seeing them for a little while because um, I had just recently completed a pass of 25 master studies, which. I'm working on, um, you know, doing my video archiving uh, with and things, uh, and uh, you'll start seeing the first of those probably in about five weeks or so, um, as we uh, we get into we get out of 25 days of tonalism and we're moving into 25 more days of tonalism. Isn't that an original and inventive? Oh, and uh, I do intend to just keep doing these master studies maybe forever. I. Uh, you know, I've had actually a guy does he reps my work in the states and stuff, so saying, "Oh, these look awesome. You should just do some large copies after the masters." And um, he was telling me that uh, people like uh, Constable would often do that, and a lot of artists would do that um, just as part of their education. And uh, you know, it really it's fine to do. All you really need to do is an attribution, like I do with all of these. That it's a study painted after in this case Francis Murphy oh no actually this isn't pa this is one of my originals folks <laughs> sorry getting confused um, 
And one of the reasons for my confusion, I'm having uh, our internet is down here in my home, um, and I usually do these from my home office. Um, so my plan today is to go ahead and do the work from my own office and then put it on a USB stick and then upload it from uh, my studio either today or tomorrow. Now today in New Zealand is Easter Sunday. Um, that's the 16th of April. So... <clears throat> And for all you guys, it's Saturday, the day before Easter. And uh, I like to be consistent. I know that, uh, you know, I've got a pretty good following out there. And, um, I, you know, it's a, uh, it's a positive feedback loop. You know, I, I put the work out and then you guys check it out. And sometimes you comment, sometimes you don't. But either way, I know people are looking at it and getting something from it. And uh, it's a good feeling to be able to share what I do. And... Uh, like I was saying yesterday, some of these master's studies that I'm doing in the studio right now, I'm painting on this uh, this burn number, and they're really coming out awesome. I'm just having, a, you know, there's, there's differences in the drawings, uh, you know, there's differences here and there, but the overall feel is really nice, and uh, I have noticed that the umber has slowed me down a bit, um, especially in the skies, because I have to sort of make sure actually little specks of this burn number come through which is it's kind of nice I like it and I've noticed this sort of thing in um, paintings like by people like um, uh, Charles Warren Eaton you know you can see sometimes he painted on quite dark uh, because you'll get little dark bits peeking out in the sky you notice them in the sky you don't really notice them in the uh, trees or the ground um, when there's bits of that ground coming through uh, the ground color I mean um, so this week I've done about nine little master studies and uh, first color pass and I have noticed uh, with working on this burnt umber that um, I don't need to do a whole heck of a lot in that second color pass and I haven't even got anywhere near a third color pass and I believe that's just because I'm being sort of slowed down a little bit um, and having to cover everything up Anyway, it's good. It's always good to, um, I don't know, when things change, uh, you know, uh, I, I wrote a blog post uh, yesterday. I'm not sure what I'm going to write about on the blog today, but uh, I'll figure out something. But yesterday I was talking about building on success, and I'm really big on that. And this is one of the reasons why I stuck with, uh, after the initial 100 days of tonalism, I could see that. Um, while I didn't really want to do a, a video and a blog post every day that I had built up um, a decent following and that there was some positive momentum there and I believe when you're you're looking at a situation where you have positive momentum it's always good to keep it going this is just part of my personality and um, really it's a way of harnessing the positive force, forces of the universe uh, to aid and assist you in your goals. You know, my goal is always to uh, make uh, beautiful landscape paintings and always get better. And uh, sometimes uh, I don't get better. Sometimes I, I, I go backwards. But um, I feel like with this uh, burn number um, situation that I've hit a, a new plateau, I've kicked my work up into a new, a new level. And while you can see uh, uh, how it relates to the things that I've been uh, doing uh, recently, um, there's some differences too, and that's always uh, pretty cool. Um, anyway, uh, you know, another thing you'll see is that uh, I like this Twilight Reverie painting, and uh, I uh, I don't do uh, and will not do copies after the masters uh, large, but um, I do sometimes take little bits of things uh, when I'm going to try and fix paintings and. One of the ways I arrived at this scene was uh, by compositing some some trees from an old master painting over a photo of a failed painting of mine in an effort to sort of fix it compositionally. And you will actually see the painting that um, I used the clump of trees on the right and the big tree uh, way to our right. You're going to see that actual master study in about five or six weeks so if you're paying attention you might see similarities and that's going to be a little five by five so 
um, by, I wish I can remember, it's a van, it's a Dutch guy, and I believe his, his painting uh, was actually a watercolor, not even oil, but uh, I digress, as per usual. Um, so, Master Studies, I'm hoping tomorrow when I get in the studio Monday, um, it's going to be very quiet here in New Zealand, everyone's taking the day off, but uh, I'll be back to work, and uh, I'm hoping that uh, to jump into a uh, the 1622 that hopefully is dry now. Um, my solution, by the way, for that was to uh, invest in um, some paint that actually has alkaloids built in to it, and in conjunction with the alkaloid medium, should be completely dry the day after I paint it, and it'll be kind of matte. I have noticed, like um, on these master studies I did, they were all painted over. Um, uh, this burnt umber as well, but they're smaller, and I don't think there was a, not a whole layer of a painting underneath all that, and I think it's a little more absorbent, but I've noticed some really matte and dull areas, and uh, my solution to that was just put a little oil on a piece of paper towel and kind of rub it down before I start painting, and that's been working great for all nine studies. So, anyway, I can see we're getting close to the end here. Hey, thanks for joining me today. Um, for Twilight Reverie. Hopefully uh, you dig this painting as much as I do, and uh, I'll be back next week with a toneless study after a master, and another one of my paintings. So, uh, meanwhile, stay tuned, and uh, take good care, stay out of trouble, and we will see you then.